Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson on classifying reef creatures. Let's have a look at our next phylum, Chordata. This phylum is often termed as the vertebrates, as most species within the Chordata phylum have a vertebrae, or what a lot of people call a backbone. There are a number of key characteristics that animals within this phylum possess, including a notochord, a dorsal nerve cord, gill slits at some point in their life, a muscular post-anal tail, and a skeleton. Now the chordata phylum consists of a lot of iconic animals, such as fish, sharks, rays, reptiles like sea snakes and turtles, and even mammals such as dugongs, whales, and humans. Now let's head to Reef HQ Aquarium and have a look at some examples of chordata species and learn a little bit more about the Chordata phylum. Now let's have a look at some of the common characteristics seen in species in the phylum of Chordata. So in the tank behind me here, we have some moray eels. Moray eels are a type of bony fish and fall under the phylum of Chordata. Now one common characteristic seen in most species within the Chordata phylum is the presence of vertebrae or a backbone. So their vertebrae is located in the dorsal region or the back of those animals. But when they're developing as an embryo, they often have what's known as a notochord, which is a flexible rod-like structure to give them support. But as they develop, they lose their notochord and it turns into their vertebrae. Now the vertebrae in these species help to protect what's known as the dorsal nerve cord. So the dorsal nerve cord often develops into what we know as the brain and the spinal cord, and is another common characteristic for species in the phylum of Chordata. Another common feature for species in the Chordata phylum is the presence of gill slits at some point during their life stage. So in the case of bony fish and moray eels, they use those gill slits in order to breathe. So if you look at the moray eels, you can often see them sitting with their mouth slightly open, or sometimes they're opening and closing their mouth. And what they're doing is making sure they have that constant flow of water over their gills to make sure they can constantly breathe. Now, moray eels are just one species in the phylum of Chordata. Let's go ahead and have a look at a few others now. In the tank behind me here, we have lots more species that fall into the phylum of Chordata. This is our predator tank, and it contains lots of bony fish, some sharks, and even a ray. Now, as these animals are swimming around, you'll notice that they use their tail fin, or what we call their caudal fin, to help them swim. This is another common feature for animals in the phylum of Chordata, because this is what's known as a post-anal tail. So a post-anal tail is a highly muscular tail, or fin in the case of fish, that does not contain any organs related to digestion. Some species within the phylum of Chordata, such as humans, only have a post-anal tail during embryonic development. Another common feature that can be seen in a lot of species within the phylum of Chordata is the presence of a skeleton. Now, when most people think of a skeleton, they think of bones. But did you know there are some species in the phylum of Chordata that don't have a skeleton made from bone? So in the tank behind me, you might see the sharks and the ray swimming around. They are what are known as cartilaginous fish because they have a skeleton made from cartilage. So that's the same stuff that makes up our noses and our ears. It's very lightweight and flexible. Now we've seen some more species that have those gills that we were talking about before. But there are, are some species in the phylum of Chordata that don't contain gills after embryonic development. Let's go have a look at some of those now. In the tank behind me here, we have some sea snakes. Sea snakes and marine turtles are examples of species of Chordata that don't retain their gill slits for their whole life. When it comes to Chordata species, they all evolved from species in the ocean. So they all start off their embryonic development the same. 
So in the case of sea snakes and sea turtles, when they were embryos developing inside their mums or inside their eggs, they did in fact have those gill slits, that key characteristic of chordata species. But as they developed, they lost their gill slits and instead they developed lungs because they breathe air. Now they do however have all of those other key characteristics that chordata species have. They have that post anal tail, they have a skeleton, they have a backbone and a dorsal nerve cord. Because if you have a look at the shell or carapace of a sea turtle, on the inside you can actually see where their vertebrae go. And just like other chordata species, that vertebrae helps to protect their dorsal nerve cord. So not all chordata species have those key characteristics for their whole life. But the fact that at some stage during their life, they have those characteristics is what makes them examples of species within the phylum chordata. Thank you for joining our classifying reef creatures lesson on the phylum chordata or the vertebrates. Hopefully you all learnt something new. So stay tuned for more educational lessons from Reef HQ Aquarium, the National Education Centre for the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Bye everyone, see you next time.